Nat Okoro. I'm the son of a railway man, a railway artisan. I was born on the 26th of February, 1931. That makes me 86 years. I jumped into the railways without preparation. But one thing that you cannot take away was my passion for the railways because I was born in the railway environment, in the railway community. From infancy, I picked up all the sound and the bites in the railway community. So as I was growing up, I caught the culture and the traditions, the discipline of the railways. In fact, I saw the railway as a fancy stuff and I enjoyed the picture I saw. So when my father could not continue paying fees, I had to go to his friend in Port Harcourt to ask if I could be admitted into the railway. And it turned out that God at that point in time provided for an opportunity for me to join the traffic trading school. Nathaniel was founding father and facilitator of the NITT project and became subsequently part-time consultant to NITT and played significant roles to secure the recognition of the institution as sub-regional human resources and institutional center. He was associate resource person for the training needs survey role of NITT conducted by Amadou Bello University Consult. As consultant to NITT, he prepared the detailed plan and platform for operating the NITT Decade Development Strategy and Performance and organized a four-day train-the-trainer workshop in 1995. Before you can evaluate something, there must, be, there must have been a standard set for it to achieve. It's against that background you'll be able to rate whether it has performed or it has not performed. The railway was seen as a very significant asset. An asset of inestimable value in Nigeria. And so the vision was a railway that really delivered efficiency, and effectiveness in the economy. So the railway at the time also selected people on the basis of what I used to call social capital, not political capital. Social capital in the sense that in those days, the British had to choose based on character, competency your competence and deadly your chemistry, your ability to work in a team. First of all, the NRC Act made it dependent on the Federal Ministry of Transport. So the mere fact that railway management had to have somebody breathing over their shoulders introduced inefficiency. So if I join the railways now, I join them on the basis of the fact that they have failed by the standards set by the British. They may have succeeded by the standards set by politicians. I'm really not in a position to judge Nigeria. But I've had enough experience uh, going through the systems to know that where we missed it is when we lost the understanding. First, that success of any regime depends on the institutions, the systems, the policy frameworks left behind. Have we got it? 
the legacy. In fact, I for one who said it, is it Socrates or someone who said, success without a successor is failure. We lost it at the point where we lost track with the truism of that statement. The responsibility for consolidating and unbundling is there for government to do, but that will be on advice. He's a very thorough person. He um, can stand mediocrity, and um, I guess that's uh, the old training. And we've learned quite a lot from him, um, which has impacted our lives. And um, I think I'm a better person today because of what I've learned from him. Um, one of the things I've learned from him is that um, you should look for people or have people with integrity around you all the time and that material things really don't matter as much as they think they do. In 1988, Nathaniel was appointed lead member of the tax team MITC by the Ministry of Transportation. The team was given remit to plan and bet a federal assisted road, rail, water based intermodal urban transit program. Subsequently, he became a member of the Mass Transit Implementation Committee with responsibility for line and staff operation of MITC program. As a principal consultant at Natchuk's Consult, Nathaniel collaborated with team of Rome and Transop Technique Rail of Belgium to undertake a study commissioned by Mr. President in 2002 on the development of the 25-year strategic vision of rail development in Nigeria from 2002 to 2027. He was appointed a member of the committee set up by the Ministry of Transport to implement the 25-year strategic vision of railway development. The study report provided the basic platform for the ongoing railway rehabilitation and reconstruction projects. Too many, but let me uh, narrow it down to a very few. The first, of course, you should know, is my father and my mother. Uh, my father walked on the railway. I thought he owned the railway. I didn't know he was a laborer. He was an artisan. I thought, I grew up to think that he owned the railway. Because every opportunity, he had every skill, he had every energy, he reversed there. So I thought it was a private property. Do you hear me? So he was my role model. He gave me the opportunity to see, have a vision of my mountain that I want to climb. So the, he taught me never to leave education when I become a man. And that's what I'm telling the children. Don't leave education. I'm still pursuing my own college degree at 86. So don't be surprised. Oh, by the way, at 81, if you open that chamber, open that chamber a bit. Look at that. That's my law section. I'm still studying law. I was in Cambridge a few where I bought that. So at 86, about 90, I, I'll, get, I'll show you my, my law degree. So I want you to be like that. Eh? Don't be satisfied with the... My brother Nat is very unique in that when you talk of somebody who cares about his siblings more than himself, there's none like him. I recall that when he was in college, all of us come from ordinary Nigerian family that is struggling to bring up their four sons. At a point in government class four, because the middle school, government college where he then stopped at middle school, he had to leave school to look either go to a cricket grammar school or King's College or something because the middle school does their colonial time to continue his education. 
But looking around and finding that if he continued, his siblings would not have education. So he opted on advice of our father to come and take a job in the Nigerian Railway Corporation. They trained him in Ibuta Meta. That is his first college. As if he knew that he alone cannot carry the family. He stopped, we went, he continued. Continued his work, paying her fees and all that. Even when I came back from England, my wife and I lived with him. We stayed in his house to get married. He was a bachelor. It was after we got married in his house, his friends started teasing him. Look, and that was how he got married, because his interest was book, book, book. Patrick told me, even though much younger than myself, has my respect. I saw a young man growing up, not bothering about Godfatherism, but making it himself. It reminded me of who I have always been. You get it? I've never had a Godfather. Never. The only Godfather I've had on earth is my God. And he's my father indeed. So, Pat got that stack of greatness in him. The greatness to see that what matters is what you have contributed into a system or into an economy than what you have taken out of it. The everybody in the world thinks about greatness in terms of what you have taken out of the system rather than what you put in it. So CVL typified by Pat reminds me of the man who puts in not the man who takes out. The man who leaves footprints on the rocks of time. I've known uh, Elder Nat Okoro right from the 50s, early 50s, 1954, 55, I've known him. So Nat, we looked at Nat as senior. We dared not talk before him at that point in time. He was a stickler for cleanliness, orderliness, brilliant. So, so we look at it, look at senior, look at senior, look at senior elder Nat. When you remember Nat as a friend, you know indeed you've got a friend. In your presence, in your absence, Nat, you can always count on him that you have got a friend. You can always have not represent me anywhere without any briefing. You know, it does not matter, particularly if it is a place where I know that they think that everybody has a price. When you remember that, you have remembered a detribalized Nigerian. And I give you just an example. I, I went witnessing to Nat. I said, Nat, do you know that with all your brilliance and everything that you have, you are nothing without Jesus. You can do nothing without Jesus. Why don't you come and have Jesus and be saved? He said, how do you want me to identify with Jesus? I have about 12 directors in my midst here. Muslims, Hausa, this Hausa, you know, Fulanese and uh, 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 Muslims. And then you come and have Easterners and so on and so forth. Now you single me out as a Christian, a born again Christian. What do you think? What about those who are working under me? Those who are born again, people who think, they, oh, those are the people on my side and the rest are enemies. How do I run the place? That is not for you. My message to the Nigerian youth is discover who you are and the purpose of your life 
early in life. Pursue your vision with clear understanding. Study hard, work hard, play hard. Take advantage of every energy, every skill, every opportunity you have. Yeah, I said study hard and take advantage of every uncommon school of life and every university of experience. Ladies and gentlemen, with a standing ovation, I present to you Nathaniel Okoro.